Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath. And in episode 243, I want to talk about how a crisis management team should communicate during a crisis. One of the things that we see often here at Brightpath as a challenge for organizations is really establishing that single source of truth during a crisis. In fact, in almost every case we're ever involved in where we're coming in and evaluating uh, or conducting an exercise and then you know doing the after action for that, or we're evaluating a business continuity and crisis management program, and we get into the details of managing that incident, we find that this idea of a centralized source of truth a way to stop the swirl, as I like to say, um, of all of these text messages and email chains that go on during a crisis, we often find that that's a challenge for organizations. One of the most common things that we find is we're interviewing executives about how they've worked through some recent disruptions. And even if they think they've done well, one of the things they complain about, one of the things that just consumes an enormous amount of time is really understanding what the hell's going on in the crisis. And so you find these text message groups and you find these long email chains and you find all of these challenges around keeping people informed. And we have a fairly straightforward answer to that. And that is that you need to establish a single source of truth and you need to think about what we refer to as operational crisis communications. Or put another way, it's how you're communicating what's going on in the crisis while your communications and PR team focus on the reputational management aspects of communicating external to the organization uh, and keeping your team informed internally about what's going on, about things like the your intranets and Microsoft Teams or Slack or whatever the solution is that you're using. When we think about operational crisis communications, we, we're gonna assume for the purposes of this conversation that you have a crisis management team. And so what we're talking about is how you use that crisis management team to communicate what's going on. The, the first bit of communications that we see sending is when you're activating the crisis management team, you need to tell folks that you've activated your crisis management team. So you have an activation communication. When your crisis is over and you're deactivating the crisis management team, you should have a deactivation communication that says that. The most important communication though you can send is what we think of as the situational update. We generally build crisis processes around a cadence of where your crisis management team meets and then within an hour of that meeting, you're sending a communication back out to uh, a a large group of stakeholders and, and the crisis management team outlining the current status of the situation, what actions have been taken, what the status of the organization is, what your next steps are, and when they will get their next update. And you need to just make sure this is happening on a cadence that is appropriate for the velocity of the crisis that you're in. This has to be, uh, in our minds, has to be an email. It's too long for a text message uh, kind of update. Um, But you can use your tools like a mass notification system, Alert Media, Everbridge, OnSolve, or some other solution that you're using could be part of how you're communicating. We have found the situational update, an effectively written situational update, to be a critical part of making sure that you're keeping people informed throughout a crisis and you're establishing this single source of truth. There are some other communications we often think about, but we start with activation, situational updates, and then the deactivation communication. Another communication you could ponder though is what we would call a monitoring alert or an escalating alert, an escalating incident alert. And that is a way to level set communications about something that's not really a crisis yet, but you have something that's escalating that you're responding to, right? You're aware of it, your crisis management team, you're making them aware of it. Uh, Maybe there's some other support that you've arranged but it's not yet in that full-blown crisis activation. But it's a communication that I always called it the keep your pants on email. It's a communication that basically says, this has happened, we are assessing the impact, or we know that this is the impact, and there are some actions being taken to support that. If there are additional updates, we will share them. If you have questions, contact whoever, whoever. The point is that you're telling people that you know it's happened, 
that you're responding to it and that no other actions are necessary at this time. So when we think about establishing a source of truth, a single source of truth, and then communicating what's going on in a crisis, these are the communications that we think of. On a final note, the audience is an important part of this. And I am a big tent person when it comes to thinking about the communications audience. If it's not truly a very sensitive situation, then we would encourage you to think about the widest possible distribution of stakeholders that would make sense for your organization. Back in my big company days, we sent our crisis communications, our situational updates to almost every officer and director in the entire organization, along with leaders at lower levels in those impacted areas, and then all levels of our crisis management structure. We had three teams, like a, kind of like a bronze, silver, gold approach that some of you might use. But the point is, by informing people, you're stopping the swirl, you're stopping the rumor mill, and you're being able to, you're giving them the information that they need to feel confident in your response and therefore the organization's response. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.